Hi everyone, welcome to enzyme logic classes. Today we will be studying about proteolytic activation of enzymes. So proteolytic activation of enzymes as the name indicate is activated by cleavage of one or few peptide bonds. So there are many enzymes which are activated in this way. So these enzymes are secreted from the cell as inactive gymogen or proenzymes. So during the synthesis or uh, before secretion into their target, so they are almost inactive. So uh, they have no activity, but they are activated later on. So removal of few peptide bonds converts the inactive gymogen into active enzyme. So this activation is irreversible. One of the most important points to remember that the allosteric activation of enzyme or the covalent activation of enzyme is reversible when the, the added molecule or the regulatory molecule is removed from the enzyme, the enzyme regains its activity or uh, the inactive form. Whereas the proteolytic activation is an irreversible process that occurs once in the lifetime of enzyme. So it can occur outside the cell. So most of the time enzymes need to be activated at a place far from its secretion. So this proteolytic activation allows the uh, enzymes to be activated at a site distant from its source of secretion. So this is necessary for uh, the organism because the activation of enzymes at the site of secretion may cause many unwanted lysis or uh, damages to the cell. Many digestive enzymes, so chymotrypsin, pepsin, trypsin and apoptotic proteins such as caspases are activated by this proteolytic activation pathway and one of the most important thing to remember is that so this proteolytic activation is energy independent so it is a passive process and cells use this uh, method of activation of enzyme activity to regulate the function of many enzymes so here are a list of few enzymes which are activated this uh, through this pathway so pepsinogen becomes pepsin in the stomach trypsinogen becomes trypsin chymotrypsin becomes alpha chymotrypsin which is the completely active form so pro carboxypeptidase becomes carboxypeptidase pro elastase becomes elastase in a uh, completely activated form and blood clotting factors which are inactivated when the I mean there is no injury or no uh, <clears throat> uh, damage to the blood vessels they are activated after there is a damage so for example prothrombin becomes thrombin so there are uh, likewise there are some 13 or 14 uh, uh, blood clotting factors which are activated uh, after they get a uh, signal from the cutting site or the site of damage. So procollagenase become collagenase. So procollagenase is the enzyme upon activation become collagenase and they are involved in degradation of collagen. So for example, lot of collagens need to be degraded in the uterus of uh, a female after the birth of the baby. So in that way, it helps to restore the functionality of the particular organ of the body. So similarly, procaspases become caspases. So caspases are activated when there is an induction of uh, apoptotic pathway. So that is a programmed cell death and normally in uh, functional cells which are not uh, going to die, the caspases are not formed. So once 
the cell get a death signal from outside or from inside so this uh, procaspases become caspases and they degrade the uh, i mean they activate the apoptotic part so how do they do it so chymotrypsin is a prototype example of this proteolytic activation so we'll see what are the events uh, what are the major events happen during proteolytic activation of chymotrypsin so chymotrypsin is originally synthesized as a 245 amino acid which is termed as chymotrypsinogen so this is secreted by uh, the pancreas and secreted into the duodenum and where it emits the trypsin so trypsin is always present in the stomach and during the throughout the life cycle so some of these enzymes are always present in the digestive tract of the organism so trypsin this cleaves this bond between 15th amino acid and 16th amino acid so it makes the uh, single polypeptide into two fragments so which are still joined by disulfide bridges and uh, by doing this the chymotrypsinogen becomes pi chymotrypsin which is active but not yet completely active so removal of another uh, peptide from here so this peptide is a dipeptide composed of 14th amino acid and 15th amino acid and from here 147th amino acid and 148th amino acids so removal of two dipeptides uh, creates a 241 amino acid long alpha chymotrypsin so this is the completely activated form of chymotrypsin and they are held together by two disulfide bridges so removal of these two peptides make this uh, chymotrypsin gene three fragments which are held together by two uh, interchain dipeptide bonds so this completely active chymotrypsin is now functional and it degrades the protein as we have discussed in earlier videos so what are the major changes that happen during activation of chymotrypsin so one uh, so we are going to discuss few of them few important uh, uh, structural changes that happen during this activation so cleavage of this bond peptide bond between 15th and 16th amino acid makes the amino terminal of 16th amino acid which is a isoleucin free and this amino, uh, amino terminal is protonated so protonation means this nh2 become nh3 plus so this nh3 plus moves inwards and interacts with aspartic acid 194 through an ionic bond so we have already discussed what are these bonds so this uh, this ionic bond makes the protein structure stable similarly one more important event that happens during this activation pathway is the movement of methionine from position 192 which is buried deep inside the chymotrypsinogen towards the surface so so this is the surfacing of methionine 192 and other two residues 187 and 193 which make the active site of the chymotrypsin they become more extended so these changes make the hydrophobic pocket so we have seen that these amino acids uh make the hydrophobic pocket the hydrophobic pocket is the place where the side chain of the hydrophobic amino acids uh, such as uh, tryptophan tyrosine phenylalanine and methionine fits and without this pocket the enzyme is not going to act uh, or not going to digest the peptide bond and <coughs> the other notable change is the main chain amino group from glycine 193 and serine 195 they become reoriented to form the oxyamino hole 
so we have already discussed what is the importance of this oxygen manifold so this oxygen manifold houses the c double bond o so carbonyl carbon of the amino acid okay so which is to be cleaved so just the just before the peptide bond so so this oxygen manifold houses this carbonyl carbon and without which the active site will not be formed so cleavage of this uh, two peptides makes creates the oxygen ion hole in the chymotrypsin so in a not cell hydrolysis of few peptide bonds could trigger discrete conformational alteration in the enzyme to activate its enzyme activity so it is a uh, the the chymotrypsin is a prototype prototypic example of proteolytic activation of enzymes and similarly the other enzymes these enzymes are also activated in a similar pathway similar process and once they are activated there are processes i mean there are specific molecules which are secreted by some other cells which inactivate them for example uh, activated trypsin is inhibited by pancreatic trypsin inhibitor so these inhibitors are small molecules like this this one is 6 kilo dalton and is secreted from, from pancreas to inactivate the active trypsin so this is in a not cell the proteolytic activation of enzymes in the next video we will be looking at the covalent uh, regulation of enzyme activity